Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. This is video number two of the modern production cookeries in our series of production cookeries versus handmade cookeries from Nepal. In our first video we talked about cold steel and Lynn Thompson. How Lynn Thompson was frustrated with knives always breaking on him which led him to the drawing board and in developing cold steel. We talked about how his particular uh, cookery design, which was approved by the Bando Society, who examined his blade and allowed their seal to be uh, placed on his blades. It shows a very good, excellent quality uh, cookery design. This is um, probably the best of the, among the best, and among, among the top best of the cookery designed production blades. This is one that really sets the standard. There's lots of videos on YouTube where this blade is being demonstrated. It's been put through a lot of different torture tests and there's a lot of people who have really enjoyed the, this quality cookery. Now what's very unique about it is that he had followed a traditional cookery design. He used a very good steel O1 tool steel. He first originally started with the uh, carbon 5, which is a 1085 high carbon steel, which was excellent and performed very well. And the O1 has just stepped it up even higher. He also makes the uh, San Mai, which is a laminated steel, which is also extremely uh, good and durable, but a little bit more on the pricier side than this particular one. He, used, he chose an excellent quality handle design that is very ergonomic and friendly to the hand and is made out of a material that will stay in your hand even if your hand is dipped in oil. We also showed the quality of his scabbard that he put with it. It has many lashing points and it has a great locking system that locks it in and keeps it from falling out. You don't even need this uh, retention strap to keep it in its scabbard. What that actually helps you do, it keeps that belt loop in a vertical position where if you didn't have that it would tend to you know, wobble a little bit more. So that's about the only function that this additional snap really provides is to, have, to keep it more of a vertical position when riding on your belt. Because this locking mechanism that he trademarked with this scabbard, which is the Secure, Secure X, is excellent and keeps the knife from rattling in the scabbard and also keeps it locked in there until it's ready to be drawn and used. And all it requires is a simple push of the thumb. So very, very good design. Excellent in every possible way. And sets the standard for today's market for anybody making cookeries out there up in a production facility whether you you know whatever company it is this is the standard now Lynn was a master marketer and we talked about that in that video but he used negative marketing and he also used video marketing to a masterful way now with the video marketing he was making videos before there was a YouTube before there was an internet so and, and in those videos, he was putting his knives through all kinds of different torture tests, demonstrating their durability, their strength, and that they are able to perform and do their designed intent. So form follows function very, very well. And if you remember in my uh, supplementary uh, video where I talked about the criteria in which I'll be judging these knives by, this is really an excellent uh, uh design that shows form follows function and also a simple design. There's nothing really fancy and frilly about this. It is very simple. You know, it has the cookery uh, ergonomics and design um, and physics which allows that forward chopping it is a very uh, durable strong steel, good steel, but a flat grind, very simple, very uh, ergonomic friendly handle but nothing really fancy or frilly about it. It's just very comfortable, very well thought out and uses an excellent material. Scabbard, 
form follows function. It does everything that a scabbard should do. Everything. You know, it has different lashing points. Even has a drain hole at the bottom at the tip, allowing water to come out if you were to take this in water. So it is a very, very excellent, excellent design. So Lynn, in his uh, negative advertising, he would come out and he would say, this is the best cookery out there. Nobody makes a better cookery than cold steel. This is the best cookery. Now, those of us who love handmade cookeries might not necessarily agree with him on that. However, by his bold statement, whether we like it or not, we're going to remember the brand name of his, of his uh, company. We're going to remember Cold Steel. Might be like this. Man, can you believe that Lynn Thompson guy and what he said about Cold Steel, how it's the best knife in the world? Can you believe that? How arrogant. Well, guess what? You've used his name. You've used his product's name, the company name, Cold Steel. Now the next thing might be, well, I just may have to test it myself. I may have to go out and get me a Cold Steel knife. Now if you do that, you've bought one of his knives. And once you've had one of his knives in your hand and you actually use it, you might go, hey, you know what? This isn't half bad. It's pretty good. He makes a good product. I think I'm going to get me another cold steel knife. Now he's got a loyal customer who's going to come back to cold steel and he's going to think of it in a positive way, not in a negative way. So that's how negative advertising works in a very positive way. You remember it. Unfortunately, it's human character to remember bad things more than good things. You'll always remember somebody who did, who gave you horrible service more than you will remember somebody who gave you excellent service. I wish it was different, but that is human nature. And so that's why negative advertising works and why he was able to use it so effectively in building his company. The fact of the matter is, uh, Cold Steel isn't going anywhere. They've been around for a long time, since the 1980s, and they have really set the standard and the barometer for a lot of other companies that have existed longer than them, but had to come up to, to meet their standards in doing video demonstrations, in making a better product that will, uh, will stand up to punishment and become more durable. So in many ways, Cold Steel has helped the knife industry get better. Now, that was video number one. In this video, we're going to talk about some other of my favorite designers and some of my favorite companies that make a production knives and production cookery type blades. Now, that will be the first one that we're going to talk about is Blackjack Knives. Blackjack Knives started in 1987 by Mike Stewart and Steve Lewis. Mike's first design for under the Blackjack uh, label. Now, let me one, stay one thing about Mike Stewart. Mike Stewart's been around for a long time and has been designing knives for a very long time. And at one point, he was even the president of Marble uh, Knife Company, which is one that did, goes all the way back to the early 1900s, or, or um, earliest, early 20th century like in 1909 or something like that when Marble Knives uh, first started. I may have that date a little bit wrong, so don't hold me to it. But, and he wasn't the president back then, but he, it was a, a knife company that's been around for a long time and still is around uh, for a long time. But at one point in time, he was the president of that company. Now he's the president of um, Blackjack Knives and Bark River Knives. And they, he makes an outstanding product. But as a designer, he's, and the reason why he's one of my favorite designers is because he knows how to keep things um, very simple and yet perfect. I mean, he thinks about the total package. He thinks about the blade, the steel, the handle, the, the sheath that's going to be in it. And he thinks about how that knife's going to be used. And when he designs it, he designs it so it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So form follows function to a T with Mike Stewart. And he also follows the less is more. Now, for Mike, the Mamba, the first knife that he designed under the Blackjack label, is probably about as fancy and frilly as Mike gets. In this particular design, this 
he really made a bold statement with the first knife that he designed. This one is very futuristic and is a very beautiful and elegant knife. It's a recurve, it's certainly not a kukri, but it is a recurve blade. It is a knife that is designed, it could be a fighting knife, it could definitely be a hunting knife, it could definitely be a camp knife. It, it will fit many different function tasks that you would need it to do. He is also a guy who thinks about the total package, like I said. So he knows that the handle is just as important as the blade design, the ergonomics of the blade, the, uh, the grind of the blade, and the steel that you use for the blade. The handle, if the handle is not comfortable in the hand, I don't care how good or how sharp that knife is, you're not going to pick it up and hold it and use it for very long. Why? Because your hand will hurt. In this particular case, he thinks about that. And so this particular handle design has a great uh, palm swell, plus it flares out in the, at the, uh, the, the pommel end of the knife that keeps it in your hand from flying out of your hand. He also used a material, which was craton, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but he, he put like a snake texturing on it, which really kind of uh, sets it up to being... Um, looking like a snake. Um, but everything about this blade is functional. Even though it is a very beautiful blade, he has an, a very prominent swedge on this uh, blade which uh, tapers to the point in a very fine point. And that keeps it very light. He keeps the balance of the blade right where it should be, which is right where about where that finger choil is. And which makes this a very light and user-friendly knife it could be a, a, a fighting knife for a martial artist or for somebody in the military. It also could be very good in the hand for somebody who's a hunter. And part of it has to do with the, the ergonomics of this handle. If you see how it, it tapers here towards the coulion, the, the guard of the hand. And that is so that you could get a nice pinch grip. And with that balance right there, it keeps this very nimble and great dexterity in your hand. So if you were to take a large game, for instance, like an elk, and you wanted to skin it, you could get right in there between the, the hide and the, and the flesh and be able to, to have good control and dexterity and be able to, to do an excellent job in skinning a large game with this knife. With it, the handle design that he's put on it just gives you just many different choices. Plus... It also has the, the screw nuts on here, so you could actually take this handle off and lash it to a pole if you needed to, or if you wanted to wrap it with something else like, you know, cordage or whatever. Although, I, I would never take this handle off, only because it is so, so comfortable in the hand. Um, I love it. Now, this particular one is not the one that he came out in... Uh, 1987 with it's an identical design but he brought it back um, under the blackjack label about two or three years ago and this particular one is made out of a two tool steel but it is made identically to the original as far as its shape and design and and the handle materials it's just the, the steel changed he also changed uh, i think the scabbard i think at the time it was a little different scabbard than this this is what currently is um, the quality of scabbard that you could expect from Blackjack Knives with Mike Stewart. In that it has a very wide belt loop. It has molly compatible in the back. So you have different lashing points. You can put it on a backpack or carry it in a different way. And the thing that I really like about the way that Mike thinks about the scabbard is he this little... Um, tab here to, to hold the retention tab to hold this knife in its in its uh, scabbard on this particular design he puts it behind the cutting edge so it is not anywhere near if I take even if I forgot to uh, tuck this in this little notch she provides it it's still out of the way to where I'm not going to cut it now granted there are other knives that Mike has made and does make where this is on the other side and it does go over where the cutting edge is. Hence why he puts a little notch in the, uh, in the scabbard that allows this, this uh, flap to get tucked under 
and stay out of the way of the cutting area. So all you have to do is tuck it under there and you can pull that knife in and out of your scabbard and never come close to cutting this. Excellent thought. A lot of companies don't even think about that and have never thought about it. And I have certain scabbards where I have cut this little tab right off. Um, and so, or I, you know, I ended up cutting it off because it was cut too deep and it was, wasn't very functional anymore. This one will stay relevant and functional on this scabbard. Excellent design. Now this one is with the Craton handle and I think it's DLT um, company, trading company, that still has some of these um, in their, at their website for sale. This one I think you can get it for about $200 with the Craton handle. Now they also make it with a variety of other handle uh, materials that are still being offered on that site. This one happens to be the Ivory Micarta handle. Very nice, very sexy, very smooth and beautiful, elegant. Micarta is one of those materials that when it gets wet it gets tackier and it will stay in your hand. So even though it's nice and smooth and polished and beautiful it's uh, still going to hold, stay in your hand. And if you look at this, this really shows the um, the ergonomics of that handle. Just absolutely fantastic. Um, just so comfortable holding the hand, as many many of Mike Stewart's designs. Matter of fact, I have not held one designed knife of Mike's that didn't feel good in the hand. He just knows how to to design a handle to perfection. The entire package. Very, very good. And why he's one of my favorite knife designers. Now I'll get into some of his designs for um, doing cookeries. <coughs> Excuse me. There was a gentleman by the name of Hank Reinhardt. His uh, actual name is... Um, let me see if I have it here. It's um, Julius Henry Reinhardt, but everybody knew him as Hank Reinhardt. Hank Reinhardt was a, a historian who wrote books about cutlery and about medieval knives and swords. and um, It was just really very knowledgeable about um, all types of cutlery. He also was a reenactor. He liked to dress up as a knight and uh, and and do some sword play. So he was uh, quite a gentleman who, who really had a passion and a love for knives and swords. He met up with Bill Adams, who is the president of Atlantic Cutlery, and together both of them formed a new sister company to Atlantic Cutlery known as Museum Replica. Now Hank was one of the principal designers of the swords and knives that ended up in this catalog. And where he got his ideas was through another friend, uh, friendship that he had acquired, and that was with a gentleman who was also a fellow historian who, who wrote books about uh, a weaponry, uh, was, and who actually was also the curator of the Museum of Armories in the Tower of London, and that is, and, and bear with me if I, and forgive me if I mispronounce his name, uh, Edward Okshut, Okshut. And this is one of his books that he wrote, and it's uh, The Archaeology of Weapons. Very excellent book, very uh, just filled with knowledge of all sorts of knives and swords and weaponry. Um, of antiquity. Excellent author and, and uh, quite understandable why he would be the curator of such an important museum. Now Hank would visit that museum quite often and, and hence where he got a lot of his ideas and inspirations in some of the um, medieval and Renaissance swords that he designed and introduced into this catalog. Now, I have a few of Hank's uh, design swords from uh, Museum Replica. Unfortunately, the quality has changed since Hank passed away. 
and um, I'm very sad to say that he passed away. We lost him in 2007. But wonderful, passionate uh, designer. Well, Hank also loved cookeries. And um, many times I would see him in uh, Blade Magazine or in Knife Illustrated Magazine where he'd be talking about cookeries and he'd be demonstrating them and, uh, and talking about some of the ones that were in Atlantic Cutlery. And when he came up with his design of his cookery, it was, uh, it was widely published in all the Knife magazines. And what he did is uh, Hank got together with Mike Stewart, and the two of them put their heads together and uh, produced a Hank Reinhardt design. Now, it happens that I do have that cookery that was made by Blackjack uh, back in the, I believe it's, um, or I think I acquired this roughly around, I want to say the late 1990s. And that's, um, I think I'm putting it probably at the, at the date that it was released. This is a beautiful, excellent, quality cookery. Every bit as good as the quality of cold steels. And what is really beautiful about this cookery and its design is one, they used an excellent high carbon steel on it. And it has a really beautiful convex edge. And this was handcrafted in Siki, Japan. So this is very, very close to being a handmade kukri, even though it has all the uh, modern production qualities. So it actually says on here, um, handcrafted in Siki, Japan, which means there were probably guys there that were uh, shaping the grind on this blade to have that beautiful convex edge uh, rather than it going through some type of uh, machine that put it, put it on there. It had actually was hand ground by somebody doing it. There's probably many other elements on it that would probably made it handcrafted. But what it has, it, you know, excellent steel, excellent uh, shape of the blade, almost kind of a serapati style, and it's a very gentle curve but it has a, a deeper belly than most serapatis, about a two inch belly and a very large um, sweet spot uh, for chopping. He put a craton handle, same material, although it's not textured, it's very smooth, but it being that craton material doesn't matter. If it gets wet, it's still sticking in your hand. It's not gonna fly out of your hand. And of course it has that Mike Stewart quality of of um, great ergonomics, great a very gentle palm swell all the way around, but makes it very very comfortable in the hand, and certainly does not create any hot spots. It's a full thing that goes all the way to the end of the of the um, uh, to the butt here. It is completely encapsulated by this craton handle with a lanyard hole, and the way that this flares in the back, I really like it. It makes it. You know, it locks locks in your hand really well, so it's not going to fly out of your hand. But you can also get a little bit more of a purchase, and you can lock your, your fingers around this tail part, which is a little beak part. And it's very comfortable to hold that way, and you get really great leverage for chopping, so for extended chopping, extended leverage. The only design flaw that I found on this blade that I really didn't like and it was this little small finger choil or at least it looks like a finger choil and I do believe that was the intent but if you were to put your finger on it just barely the pad of your finger fits on that if your finger got um, wet or whatever you might have the endangerment of sliding right up on this cutting business and I'll tell you it's sharp right up to here all the way to the, to the tip so it could be a little bit on the dangerous side. But if you're very thoughtful and you need to do some whittling, you definitely could do it and, and be able to put your, the pad of your index finger right there and get a good purchase on it. But you have to be really careful. That is the own design flaw. Now they put a, a really beautiful 
little logo on it, and it, and it actually says on it, um, it says Blackjack, it says Reinhardt, and then the name of the blade, which is the Combat Cookery. It came with a very uh, nice nylon scabbard that's a, a, a rather sturdy nylon. It's not floppy or flimsy in any way. And it has uh, leather on the inside uh, that protects it from cutting through that nylon. And trust me, this is sharp enough it could. Open in the back. You do have the retention strap that um, does hold it in there very well. It doesn't slide, um, which is very good because a lot of these that have this type of design do have some slippage, no slippage with it. And you have a very sturdy um, and a relatively wide um, belt loop. All in all, great package. And this is the original uh, Blackjack Hank Reinhardt um, cookery. This stays in my collection. I don't really go out and chop with it because this is um, a rare knife to find now. And uh, it is, you know, it's really a collector's item. It's really um, just an excellent quality knife. Now, Mike Stewart um, decided to do his own design of a cookery, and so he came out with the cookery too. And this, and this particular one, he did a fantastic um, package. Now, the idea of a cookery, as we know, it comes with a card and a chop muck. Now, that card is a small utility knife that you're supposed to be able to do your small cutting tasks with, along with that that works together with your larger chopping knife, the knife that you're going to use for bigger things. Well, Mike took that idea and he married two of his blade designs, one the, the new design of the cookery and a, a standard one that was a, a very, very successful blackjack design. And I'll show that to you. But first of all, look at that package that it comes with. It comes with a, a typical high quality leather uh, scabbard with a nice belt loop here. It is well stitched, very sturdy. <clears throat> this is no longer in production, unfortunately. So Mike, if you're out there, if you're thinking about bringing something back from antiquity of your designs, bring this one back because this is was a very successful design and I love it. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who would love it too, especially after they see this. This is uh, this is Mike's design taken of uh, uh, traditional style cookery, in that you have a little bit more of a prominent elbow than the Hank Reinhardt's um, design, uh, and it still has a nice curve to it. Uh, it's not a straight line. It is a convex edge, so it's flat ground all the way to that nice convex edge. Now this one also was made in uh, Siki, Japan but it was um, made out of AUS-8 stainless steel, which is the Japanese uh, version of like a 440C uh, um, stainless steel. This one is called the, the Kukri 2. has the Blackjack logo on it. Hopefully you can see that. And, uh, and it's a, just a, a very excellent... This one's a light to medium chopper, so it's a very light and fast kukri. Um, it's thinner than a quarter inch, so it's a little bit thinner steel, which keeps the weight down, and yet uh, still with that great ergonomics and physics to uh, this, to a kukri style blade, it's an excellent chopper. Now, he uses the same handle he uses on the Hank Reinhardt's design, but this one he does put texture on, but it's still made out of the craton material and still has a lot of the same features. Full tang all the way to the end, encapsulated with the craton. Now, he puts a more prominent uh, finger choil in it, which makes it a much, uh, much user-friendly uh, for whittling and doing your finer tasks of, of cutting without the fear of your finger sliding up onto that cutting business. So he kind of corrected it with this particular cookery. I really love this cookery. And uh, 
you know, he works with a lot of uh, really excellent stainless steel now, and I'd like, you know, if you if he's stuck with the stainless steel, he can come up with um, some of the great stainless steels that he's using right now that are, would be really great. If not, A2 tool steel would be wonderful too. Along with that comes with this one, and those of you who've collected um, any of the blackjack knives will recognize this one um, back in the day. And this one is called the, the uh, Grunt. This in itself was an independent knife that he made, which is an excellent EDC knife, by the way. Just perfect. It's got maybe like, I think it's a four to five inch blade, but has a very, it's a nice flat grind that goes all the way down to a nice convex edge. Um, you know, a, a, not an unsharpened swedge here to the, to the tip. And it is also made out of uh, AUS-8 stainless steel. This was made in Japan as well. Now look at that handle design. Again, this is a handle design that he did in, on a lot of different knives during the, the 90s when he was producing this. Um, a lot of the handles were this handle. And for good reason. It is a very ergonomic handle. It's a very comfortable handle. Again, made out of um, craton, and it is uh, encompassing a full tang with the lanyard hole. But this one has the bird beak and an integrated um, finger guard. So your, your hand's not going to slide up on the cutting business, and nor, you know, if you decide to, to want to choke back and use it for chopping, you've got a really nice bird beak that's still comfortable. It's not going to create, you know, hot spots in your hand. Uh, but the way it locks in your hand, it's just really, really comfortable. The, the, the belly swell on it just makes this, you know, a joy to hold in your hand and to use. This, it, this knife in itself is just a great, great EDC knife, like I said. So to, be, to go along with a kukri, perfect, perfect design. Um, this, I, I was able to find this on, on the Internet and, and acquire it by somebody who was um, downsizing their collection. And um, this this is just, I, I was so pleased to be able to acquire this. But excellent, excellent design. And again, Mike, if you're listening to this video, please bring this back. It's a, it's a great kit, absolutely great. Doesn't get any better than this when it comes to production blades. Steel maybe, steel might be a little better, but ATS-8 is an excellent, um, it's an excellent stainless steel. Now some of the other designs that Mike came up with uh, during the 90s was um, the Marauder series, which were kind of kukri-like. They were kind of a com combination of a kukri and a, um, a bolo, although I would call them more of a bolo design. This one is the double-edged one, which is the Marauder 1A. Now he, the Marauder 1 had uh, just a, a single edge and it was about this size, the same size as this. Now the Mar Marauder 2 had a longer blade of this design. But same wonderful ergonomic handle. This is what I was talking about with uh, this particular knife. This, that handle shows up in a lot of Mike's blades because it was so ergonomic, very successful, very good design. And uh, unfortunately, these have been discontinued also. Uh, you can find them on the internet every once in a while on eBay where somebody is, is selling them. But you'll get them for, you'll have to put out much more than what they were when they first came out. Comes with an excellent leather scabbard. This one has a little bit of slippage in it. Um, but you know, all in all, it's very good, very, um, you know, as you can tell, it's held up over the uh, test of time. And I bought this back in the 1990s. Now, uh, last of Mike's designs, and I just want to show this. It's not a cookery either. It is more of a, it, they call it a bolo. So it's a bolo design. But I want to just show the simplicity of design and how he's such a master at doing this. This is absolutely gorgeous in my, in my viewpoint. It's very simple. You know, there's no fancy frills about this. 
probably the fanciest thing that's a cordage on it. it has more decoration on it but that blade design is truly a bolo this thing is a chopping beast it really chops extremely well in this particular one he used a two tool steel when he first came out with it he was using 5160 the same steel that uh, the Gurkhas are using in the Paul. However, um, I'm not sure the reason why he decided he had to change it, but the he made three different sizes. There's this size, one that's a little bit smaller, and then one that's smaller. The smaller one is still was still made out of the 5160 high carbon steel. The other two, this one and the next uh, size up, are made out of A2 tool steel. Wonderful grind on it. Absolutely, like I said, as far as when it comes to chopping, this is this is a go-to blade. I mean, it's hard to beat this. There's very few knives out there that could chop any better than this could. And that handle is absolutely perfect. It has an integrated finger guard. Um, it swells to the to the butt, which locks it in your hand very well. It's made out of, this particular one is made out of um, that linen micarta, um, ivory linen micarta. So it's micarta, it's going to stay in your hand. It has a lanyard hole, so you can you know, put that lanyard on you if you're afraid that this might fly out of your hand. But just, it is so comfortable to use. It, you know, it begs to be picked up and swung <laughs> and, and, uh, and chop. I mean, it just... It's just one of those knives you hold in your hand and you, you want to go find a log and start beating on it with this because you know it's going to just tear up that raw log. It'll it'll turn it into into dust before you know it. And again, uh, this beautiful, fantastic scabbard um, that is double stitched, you know, open at the back. It has a good uh, carry and the carry kind of falls in at kind of an angle so it's at a good draw point. It's not just vertical like this actually will ride on your belt at a little bit of an angle but just a really elegant beautiful design less is more but form follows function to a T now um, I have it but I don't know where it is I've misplaced it there was a machete version that uh, Mike Stewart partnered with Ethan Becker from Becker Blades to do this particular machete style. Now I'm going to actually show you um, one that Ethan Becker with um, K Bar knives and um, and Becker knives. Uh, they decided to revive Hank Reithart's cookery design, and what they did is they came up with uh, a, a redo of the one that Ethan Becker and Mike Stewart got together and did. So I'm going to show this one because it's almost um, identical to the one that they did together. And that's this one. Now this one is in current production and this one's price point is roughly around $125. This is made out of um, 1095 CV uh, steel that is um, the standard steel used by K Bar knives and BK Becker knives. It's an excellent, excellent high carbon steel and the way that um, K Bar has produced them, they're really, really fantastic. It's, it's an excellent steel for large knives. Keeps an edge very good, easy to resharpen and uh, just excellent. Very, very, very good. And this, of course, is a beautiful re, um, bring back of Hank Reinhardt's design. Now, this is a little bit thicker in spine uh, than a normal machete. So, even though it might fall in that machete category, it is um, it has a thicker spine, and uh, again, it has that beautiful design. Now, this one has a saber grind, and that comes down to a very acute. Uh, edge. This one also has Hank Reinhardt's signature on it, if you can see it, which is really nice. Now, 
I'm not a big fan of, of black coating, but um, a lot of a lot of the BK Becker knives and the K bar knives has black coating. What I do like about this black coating is it has a very nice smooth finish to it. It's not that powder coated that um, has a texture to it. So when you are chopping and cutting with this, it will glide right through the material and not get hung up or um, you know become a deterrent rather than a uh, to facilitate its chopping part. So and the reason why for the black coating is to uh, obviously to uh, diminish some of the rust uh, possibilities. Now, as this coating comes starts to come off, though, you definitely, you know, because it is a high carbon steel, you're definitely going to want to oil it anyways. But very, very functional. Now, Ethan is, uh, like Mike Stewart, he makes the total package. He thinks about how this is going to be used. Is it going to be a knife that you're going to go to and pick up and use? And all of um, Ethan Becker's designs have this wonderful handle design. And it is really comfortable. It is just, it fits the hand perfectly, does not create any hot spots. And as you can see, it has a, a great little palm swell on the side and on the belly. It has um, kind of a bird beak style uh, pommel area and an integrated finger finger guard so your fingers not your hands not going to slide up and get into the cutting business and he puts a little you know it's just the way that he designs it it's ergonomic and very comfortable now this is probably a, a polymer plastic it's not a craton so it's not real soft it's a really hard plastic i would kind of like to have seen it in a craton or maybe and i do know that he does make a micarta so and because it has the type of nuts that you could uh, unscrew and take this handle off, you could put his uh, Craton handle, or not Craton, I'm sorry, his um, micarta handle and put it on and you got, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now I don't know that the particular, I know he makes a, a uh, micarta handle, I just don't know if it fits this particular handle or not. Uh, because, you know, the, the back end of this is, is styled a little bit differently on each of his knives. But most of his knives have exactly this handle, so I, I would venture to say that it probably would. Now, there's a, kind of a little bit of a finger choil here, but it's not a typical finger choil. You can lock your fingers behind this guard and, and get a nice purchase here. And you don't have to worry too much about getting into the cutting business. Um, and you're able to do your whittling with it. So it's a very, very well thought out design and very functional. Form follows functional. And it is a less is more style. It's not real fancy or frilly, but, but everything is thought about. You know, the comfort of the hand. Um, and plus, in his case, he has an extended, it's a full tang. And there's a... a a tang extension that would allow for hammering or if you had it and you needed to break out of a, a you know break glass you could break glass um, you could hammer a stake with it it's very good plus you have your your lanyard hole which allows for you know a placing your lanyard if you're afraid that this might fall out, fly out of your hand now the original one that Mike Stewart and Ethan came up with is identical to this except that it had a light gray coating on it and it might have had a little different steel. I don't know if they used the 1095 or if they used maybe a stainless steel. Um, if I could find where I placed the, the one that I have um, and, and perhaps in a future video I'll bring it in, bring it out when I do find it and show it to you. But this is identical to it except that it has a black coating. Excellent design. Now, the uh, nylon scabbard that they put it with is, is decent. It's not anything to write home about, but it's a good, sturdy uh, scabbard. They have the uh, uh, rivets on the end that will keep it from cutting through, and it has a full, um, a full plastic end to the tip, so your tip's not going to come through 
the nylon either. And it has a drain hole, so if it does fill up with water, the water's going to drain right out of that hole. So all in all, it's a very good design for this particular uh, blade. And like I said, for 125 bucks or 130 bucks, you're getting an excellent, excellent cookery that will perform every bit as good as this. Uh, the steel on this might be a little better than this, but not by much. You're gonna you're gonna get excellent performance out of this. This one is a thicker spine, so it's gonna be a heavy chopper. Where this is gonna probably be, um, it's still a heavy chopper, but it's probably more of a medium chopper than this. Both are excellent, excellent designs, and you couldn't go wrong with either one uh, as far as production blades go. And this is a Hank Reinhardt design, so just great with Ethan Becker's handle. Good. Now another uh, design that Ethan had come up with, um, and this was has been out for a long time, um, and this one is called the, um, what is it called? I think it's the Mac, Mac X, Mac X, if, if, and uh, it also is, you could know it as the BK4, a little easier than the Mac X. Now, it's kind of cookery-ish, has a very straight spine. Um, it has a, a false uh, cutting edge, but a very prominent point, great for stabbing, and it has a recurve edge here. So there is cookery qualities to it. The, the angle of the handle gives a good, gives that kind of um, same physics that a cookery would have, in that you have, a, a, you know, if you hold that, it, you have a very um, a forward heavy position, although this is not a really heavy blade. It has a nice saber grind to it. Um, a little bit gr different grind up here than at the belly over here, but you do have a good, uh, good chopping area. This has proved to be a very useful and very good tool. Um, it's just not one of my favorite of his designs, but because I'm a lover of cookeries, I had to get one. Did try it out and to see how, what I, how I felt about it. Between the two, um, I do prefer the Hank Reinhardt. This one's more of a cookery, and I love the way this performs. This one tends to be a little bit of, of a lighter chopper. And it comes with a fairly decent scabbard, which is very typical of... Um, the, the uh, K-bars, it has a plastic insert, and it is, um, let me see, it might even be ambidextrous. It is, it is ambidextrous, so you can, you know, it, it's, it facilitates both right hand and left hand carry, so that's very good about that. And um, it has, um, it's Molly compatible, it has, um, you know, these straps and a very good size uh, belt loop, and it also has an additional pocket which allows for, you know, field kit or, or if you want to carry an extra knife or uh, tender or anything like that, you can put it in that pouch and with Velcro. So all in all, it's not a bad package, and this is a very relevant knife and very useful. And um, um, and is somewhat of a cookery type kind of a, um, but not a, I wouldn't call this a cookery, based off a of cookery. That's uh, um, Ethan Becker's designs with uh, Becker knives, BK Becker knives, um, that goes along with the K-bars. Now I'm going to sh show a couple of the K-bars and then I'll give my concluding thoughts on all of this. This is a K-bar um, cookery type machete, and they call it a machete. It comes in a nylon front scabbard with a leather back and leather straps and a leather dangler. Um, so they use two um, very good materials. This is, of course, made out of the 1095 CV um, high carbon steel that all K-Bar knives are made from, majority of them anyways. Uh, this one kind of re reminds me of uh, the BSI 
um, of the 1950s to the 1990s in that it has a nice rounded uh, spine at the elbow here. However, it's a really fat blade and uh, pretty close to about 2.5 2 to 2.75 inches in its uh, depth. Um, but it is, uh, is a very well, a very uh, prominent belly, but not a super heavy uh, kukri in that it is, uh, has a thin um, stock, you know, thin spine. Now the handle is ergonomically friendly in that it's very comfortable hand. It's a little bit on the chunky side, but not terribly chunky. It's just there is a difference when you hold uh, a BK Becker knife and, and this particular um, K-bar. But it is still very comfortable to, to hold in the hand and to use in that it has a very nice um, belly swell here and has a, a very slight palm swell on the sides. It has a, a much larger and, and uh, more prominent um, bird beak, but it definitely locks your hand in there this is not going to come out of your hand at all. And you're, with this integrated hand guard, there's no way that your hand's going to slide up on the cutting business. Not only that, it has a little bit of a divot in here where you could choke up on this and you could use, you could do some whittling with it and your finger's not coming anywhere close to the cutting edge. It doesn't get shot sharp until about right here and your fingers way back here so there's no way you're going to slide up and cut your finger so it's a, a very uh, safe design it's a good chopper and uh, I do do some dem I will be doing some demonstrations with one this one in chopping test along with some of the others including the Reinhardt uh, BK Becker one now another thing I like about their design here is that this little um, tab here does pivot so it swings and you can move it out of the way when you go to re reach and so does the back one so you can get those out of the way when you go to um, putting it back in the scabbard and then swing it back over to snap it in so that is a very well thought out uh, design also it comes with a D, uh, a D ring with a dangler so you can carry it on your belt this way with a leg tie and that allows for you to move it out of the way when it's on your belt you don't have to worry about taking it off the belt so all in all it's a very well designed craton handle I believe it's a crate it feels like a craton um, might be a little bit different material but it's very similar to craton and um, um, it is full tang that goes all the way to the to the tang and you have a, a lanyard hole so all in all very very good design um, for a cookery type production blade from K-Bar now the next one I'm going to show you is um, like their light chopper and it's uh, like a, K, uh, a cookery fighter and the reason why I would say that is because they use the same identical handle that they put on the um, the traditional um, K-Bar fighting knife that the Marines and other soldiers carried during wartime. Uh, World War II, Vietnam War, many different wars they would they carry that knife. Now this one is a Kraton handle. They, the traditional one is stacked leather, but it's made in the same ergonomics. It has a nice palm swells on the side and around, so it is a very comfortable hand. And in the Kraton material, it, it will stay in your hand, won't slide out if, even if it's wet. But otherwise, all the handle components are the same as you would find on a K-Bar fighting knife in that you have the steel uh, butt pommel that allows for you know hammer strikes. If you're needing to hammer in a pen, uh, tent peg or if you know, you're going to hit a window to break it or crack some nuts out in the field for protein intake, um, it, it definitely has a lot of function to that form. And a very small but um, finger guard to keep your fingers and your hands away from the cutting edge. It is very cookery-like. It's like the smaller version of this, 
Um, it reminds me of the uh, a, a smaller version of a, um, a BSI cookery. Has that nice rounded uh, profile at the elbow and a very prominent belly. Chopping areas around here. Now this is a light chopper. It's not a a super thick spine it has the same thickness as its uh, bigger brother does. Um, so it's a relatively light knife, nice saber grind, and this is a very sharp knife. And when I first got it, I was really impressed. You know, the way that the handle feels in the hand, you definitely have an excellent chopper, and it's and it's still a very relevant uh, everyday carry knife. It's a you know excellent for the field. Now another thing that's really great about this one as well is that you have ambidextrous sheath. You can carry this if you're lefty or righty and move it and this little strap will will swivel to wherever you need it to be. So very good in that regard. But it does remind me of the Topps knives in that you know it's that um, you have your nylon sheath with the plastic insert. All in all, it's okay. It's, it's a relatively decent design. It has a molly compatibility, uh, D-guard dangler, um, plus the straps, two straps to keep it vertical and, and in right, pos correct position. And uh, like I said, that strap that moves out of the way to keep it, um, you know, to where you can ambidextrous carry. So very well thought out there. That's just a little pouch with a Velcro um, strap here. Now I put a little additional knife that K-Bar produces um, and it's, you know, this is my little carta to go with this. It just seemed fitting to do. Um, not the most useful little knife, but it definitely could do the job. You know, it, the handle's big enough to hold in your hand, so it's every bit as useful as any carta that you're going to get with um, a handmade cookery. Although, um, it's probably not going to be real super sturdy. Your breaking points are going to be right here where you have that um, jipping for your thumb. Especially right here is the weakest point. So that would be the most likely area to break. If you were pressing down it or whatever, that that's where it's going to break at. So this is for light use only. You don't want to put any strong pressure on it with a skeleton um, handle like that. Now, if you wrapped it with cordage and stuff, it probably would help, but I haven't done that. Now, this is made. This is made in China, and it's uh, probably a stainless steel. However, the the other blade is actually made in the United States. I, you know, I believe this one is. If I'm not mistaken, it'll say it on here. Yes, USA. So this was made manufactured in the United States and for some people that's really an important issue when it comes to production blades. So in buying a, a K-Bar knife you are supporting um, United States makers. Okay. Now do they make some of their blades in China or other places? Yes they do. But um, I think this one, this one's made in Taiwan. So like um, Cold Steel They've gone to Taiwan to make it, and they're able to get a consistent product out of uh, Taiwan like Cold Steel is, so um, very good. Now this one has a little bit of slippage in the uh, scabbard. It doesn't hold it really, really good, but it doesn't open up enough to where you're going to endanger your fingers or anything with exposed cutting edge, so it's okay. And for the price point, you could get this for under $100, and you can get this for under $100. So price point, you're getting two really useful um, cookery-type knives made by a production company that's been around for a long time making an excellent product and um, has been carried into battle many times. So it has a good history behind it. Not necessarily this design, but this company that makes it, and in particular like this fighting design, um, is going to be very relevant if you were to ever have to carry it into combat. This would be a good um, useful tool that would give you a little bit more um, options for an EDC being carried out into a military arena.
It's a great fighter, but also a very good chopper, good handy tool. So <clears throat> that pretty much wraps up this video in um, three of my very top favorite designers, and that is Ethan Becker, Mike Stewart, and Hank Reinhardt. Uh, all of them wonderful, very excellent designers of knives. And uh, no doubt you know in their, in their own garages they have done uh, their share of hand-built knives. But with Mike Stewart, I know that he'll use CAD and he will design his knives with CAD and then he, he prints them out out of a 3D printer and then they go to, to manufacturing it once they get a design that they like. So you use a lot of modern material, a modern ways of designing their blades but it is, um, it all starts here. This is where the creativity begins. If it isn't there, it's never going to get into a computer or on a drawing board or anywhere else. I have to see, when I, as a designer, I have to see it here first. If I can picture it in my mind and work it out in my mind, when I go to paper or if I go to CAD or whatever tool I'm using to bring that, that vision into play, that's where it all begins. And that's why Mike Stewart makes an elegant, beautiful, simple, 100% forms follows function to a T. And the same with Ethan Becker when he comes up with his designs. Same with Lynn Thompson when he comes up with his designs. So hopefully you liked this video and I gave you enough information. It wasn't too long, I hope. Um, Please like and subscribe on my YouTube page and leave me any comments there. If you have any questions or you want more information and in details of steels or measurements, weights, whatever, please message me on my Facebook page at Blue Dragonfly Training Post. And by all means, please come visit my website at, Blue, at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. That's DragonflyCookeryandKnives.com. Thank you very much. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video. Next one I'm going to do in complimentary with this one is going to be handmade cookeries from Nepal on the budget end. So it'll be two companies. It'll be ex Gurkha Cookery House and uh, GK and CO Cookery.